Today we're making some of the most beautiful, soft, buttery, delicious, homemade hamburger buns you've ever seen. There's nothing wrong with store-bought, and I use them all the time, but sometimes you just can't beat homemade, the smell and the taste of fresh baked bread. And in the case of these hamburger buns we're making today, I absolutely love them, and I've yet to find anybody who hasn't. The recipe and process are relatively simple, and they're quite in line with any of the bread recipes that you'd expect to see or make, but we're gonna make sure to measure all of our stuff out very accurately using a scale and grams rather than teaspoons and measuring cups. And as far as the ingredients, almost all of them are things that you probably already have in the house. The one exception is something called dough conditioner. Dough conditioner is one of those secret bakery weapons that your average home cook just doesn't seem to know anything about. But basically all commercially produced baked goods, bread anyway, is going to contain some of this. It's gonna make the dough a little more supple, a little more flavorful, rise a little better. Honestly, I couldn't even tell you the science behind why it works and why it makes breads better, but it just does. You may be able to find this stuff in your grocery store, but otherwise, I'll put a link in the video description below to this exact bag of dough conditioner that I'm using. So anyway, enough of this introduction. Let's get right into it and start making some dough. Let's start by taking a look at all our ingredients. And I won't bother reading off each exact measurement here as there will be a link in the video description to the full recipe, including all quantities. First, of course, the flour. I'm just using all-purpose flour for this. Next, I've got some 2% milk heated to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't really go warmer than 105 or you'll risk killing your yeast. Next, I've got a couple eggs and some room temperature butter. Then my yeast, some sugar, salt, and some of that dough conditioner. Now I've got out the stand mixer and into the bowl, I'll combine the milk, sugar, and yeast. I'll give it all a quick stir with a spoon and then just leave it alone for five to 10 minutes and give that yeast a chance to bloom. That is, start to get nice and foamy, thereby indicating to me that the yeast is healthy and active before moving on to the next step. And after a few minutes, the yeast is nice and frothy. So I'll go in with my two eggs and run the mixer on medium speed for just a minute to get everything so far all blended together. At which time I'll add in the salt, followed by the dough conditioner, and then all that flour. Now I'll mix all of that on medium speed for about another three minutes, and finally in goes the softened butter. Now the mixer is back to medium speed, and we're in the kneading phase. I'll let this thing go for a full 10 minutes, and a couple times during this mix, I'll use a rubber spatula and scrape down the sides of my bowl a bit to make sure everything's getting some good action in there. After 10 minutes, my dough is looking and feeling very nice, so now I'm going to transfer it all to a lightly floured surface, give it a few kneads by hand just for good measure, and then shape the whole thing into a ball for its first rise. I'll lightly spray a bowl with some cooking spray, drop in that ball of dough, and cover the bowl with some plastic wrap. Now I just need to leave this alone for one hour and let it do its thing. As with all dough, it'll work best if I set this dough in a relatively warm place, away from cold drafts or anything like that. An hour later and my dough has about doubled in size and is looking exactly how it should. So I'll once again transfer it to a lightly floured surface, and now it's time to punch it down, thereby degassing the dough and releasing some of the carbon dioxide built up in there. Now it's time to segment out this dough into our individual bun-sized pieces. And since I am absolutely terrible at eyeballing measurements of things, I'll use my scale to weigh out perfect 100 gram hunks. Just as I'd hoped slash planned, I ended up with eight pieces that are all identical 100 gram sizes. In pretty much every way, your bread making is going to be so much better when you start measuring everything by weight instead of volume. Next, I have to form each dough segment into a tight little ball. This is the part that I'd say took me the most practice to get the feel for. It's important to pull and stretch and squeeze the dough such that all the seams meet up at the bottom and the top and all sides are very smooth. My technique is to sort of stretch the dough down over two or three fingers and then squeezing it to get the ball pretty tight before pinching and twisting the seams together at the bottom. 
and finally in some combination of loose but firm, give it a good roll on the counter to get them as symmetrical as possible while further smoothing out the seams underneath. As I form each little dough ball, I'll place them on a parchment lined baking tray. And when they're all ready, I'll take a piece of plastic wrap that's been lightly misted with cooking spray and cover the dough for its second rise or proofing. I'll let them do their thing for 45 more minutes. So we'll pick this up there. After proofing, these buns have puffed up nicely and we're almost ready to put them in the oven. But to make them nice and golden brown, I'll lightly brush each one with a little egg wash. Basically, just one egg and about a tablespoon of water scrambled together. And if you wanted to add any sesame seeds or salt or herbs or anything like that to the tops of these buns, this is the time to do it. Just for the heck of it, I'll shake some everything bagel seasoning on these two stragglers over here. Now these buns are going into the oven that's preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'll bake them for 26 minutes. Your oven temp may be slightly different, but 26 is the sweet spot for me and my oven. After 26 minutes, they're coming out of the oven and are looking very beautiful. And one final touch while they're still piping hot, I'll brush a little melted butter over top, because why not? And because it's going to make them even better. Once cooled down just enough to touch, I'll move them over to a wire rack to finish cooling, and I'll resist cutting into one of them for at least a solid 45 minutes or so. But these buns are definitely worth the wait, and it only seems fair to end this video by building an amazing hamburger with one of them. And you know I gotta brush the insides with some more butter, and toast them on the griddle. Nothing too crazy for my burger today. Some mayo and barbecue sauce on the bun. My burger patty. Lettuce, tomato, pickle. And that's what I call a pretty looking burger. Though that soft, buttery, golden brown bun is definitely the star of the show. So that's about it. I'll put a link in the video description below to the full recipe so you can check it out. And I'll also put a link to that dough conditioner and also a couple other things that I used in making this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future bread videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm John, and this is Great Lakes Country.